Hi FlossTube, I'm Rachel Stitchy Rach here on FlossTube and on Instagram. It's Thursday the 30th of March and this is my YouTube channel about cross stitch. Hi everyone, welcome along. Uh, big welcome if it's your first time here. Um, big welcome if you're a returning viewer. Big welcome if I met you at the Essex Needles retreat uh, last weekend. So yeah, that is the main thing that has happened since... I saw you last. Uh, don't tell that to the child that had a birthday. That is definitely the main thing that happened. Um, but last weekend I was at the Essex Needles retreat, which I'll talk about in a little while, but um, a good time was had. So if you are joining me because you met me there, uh, you're very, very welcome. It's a bit late in the day than I usually film. I think the light's all right, but um, we're nearly at the end of term. Uh, final day of term tomorrow for two of my children. One of my children's already broken up and they're currently at Legoland with a friend and the other two who usually I'll be having to leave to pick up any minute now uh, at a school disco until later this afternoon although I should probably check what time that finishes so I'm actually there to pick them up but um, we have time to do this first. Uh, what else has been going on? I popped into the framers this morning before I filmed um, my Bouncing Babies ABC is currently with my framer and when I dropped it off about 10 days ago I agreed with him that because uh, it's so big we'd stretch it first and then talk about frames rather because it's only five minutes drive it's not far rather than um, trying to do it all at once so I've seen it stretched now it's amazing oh I can't wait to show you so hopefully next time I film I will have it to show you I think I rashly promised last time I filmed that I'd have an FFO for this video. I don't. I don't. It didn't happen. I did buy the supplies. So I now have the supplies to do an FFO. But still no FFO. So maybe by next video I might have the bookmark finished. We'll see. But hopefully by next video... I mean, obviously we do have the Easter bank holiday before I film again. But even so, I think um, hopefully by... Next time you see me, I will have that Bouncing Babies ABC FFO'd. And I did meet a lot of people at the Essex Needles retreat who did give me a bit of confidence to try and finish some of my other FFO's and not to be so scared of my, of my sewing machine. So I think I've got some ideas about how to go about some things and um, yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll get that sewing machine out, who knows? Who knows? I have a massive pile of stuff to show you today as well. I've got quite a lot of whips. I've got a bit of a disaster that I think, well, not I think, I know. I realised it was a disaster about five minutes before I turned the camera on. I had a sneaking suspicion it was a disaster, but it is now confirmed that it is a disaster. But a lot of whips. Um, a tiny bit of knitting, a bit of haul, and then a few things I got from the Essex Needles Retreat to show you. So yeah, yeah. So, I, what should we do first? Should we do retreat chat first? So first of all, thank you um, to Elaine Ellie Welly Stitcher and Teresa, Teresa Little Stitcher for hosting the Essex Needles Retreat. I had a fab weekend. I've never been through a retreat before. I was a complete retreat newbie. Um, I was the last, I think I was about the last person to arrive, not exactly the last person because a few people had to work on the Friday and were coming down later but I only live about an hour, I think it took me an hour and a quarter to drive, it's not far and I'd intended to leave earlier than I did leave on Friday morning but you know life just was life and I ended up just having more things to do than I anticipated before I left the house on Friday morning so I was like I got there about 10 minutes before lunch <laughs> and I think people were starting to get a bit worried about me to be honest. That was nice that people were actually concerned about where I was. So I got a very warm welcome being one of the last ones and Crafting Kirsty really uh, really kindly saved me a seat at their table so I met Kirsty in person which was very exciting. Um, and I met a lot of people that I knew from Instagram or YouTube in person which was really exciting and everyone was super nice but the weirdest bit was and you know it's funny when you do boss cheap for those of you that do it you'll know you like I'm sat in my spare room and I've got a camera and I'm just chatting to this camera and I know it's out there and I know people can go and watch it 
but somehow you don't really think about or I don't anyway I yeah I know people do and then people write me comments and but yeah it's really strange because people came up to me and like, oh, I love your things and I love your films and I, I assume the ones that are like oh, you're terrible just kept, <laughs> kept themselves to themselves but um yeah it was really nice that people spend the time to watch them but it's a bit weird as well and people are like I know who you are and I'm like, I, I'm like oh my god I'm yeah not that I have loads of viewers, but it was really nice to know that actually someone is on the receiving end of these. So yeah, if you said that to me, thank you. Thank you for um, telling me that someone is actually watching. So, and it, it was just lovely to meet everyone. I feel like I'm waffling a bit now, but it was really lovely to meet everyone. I sat next to um, Kat from Cat V Stitches and Alison, who is, doesn't have a flush tube, but is the stitching whippet on Instagram so I sat between them um, and we had a lovely table uh, yeah and we had some nice food and Ellie's hotel uh, not Ellie Elaine's because Ellie Welly Stitcher Elaine's hotel is super friendly the staff were really friendly and they made us feel very very welcome uh, we played some good games um, we played bingo one night we played six rounds of bingo I think Elaine was regretting that <laughs> about four rounds in uh, as everyone got slightly more sloshed around or maybe that was just me uh, so yeah I also apologise if you spoke to me late in the evening because yeah that probably wasn't making a lot of sense if I'm honest anyway so I'll show you what I stitched at the retreat I'll show you I uh, won a raffle prize not as many as Janet Dodd who won all the raffle prizes if you know you know I got a little I got a few freebies off the freebie table so it's all here um, and we played a, a game in the tables and I'll show you what my present was from our table game but yeah I had a really fab time the first night um, we were there sat down in the bar next lady said hello introduced myself and she said oh, where are you from you know general chit chat in Kent yeah yeah I said oh, where in Kent I said oh do you know Kent oh, I live in Kent I said well if you draw a triangle between these places I live kind of where in that triangle anyway she only lives like six miles from me and they have a stitching group so Hopefully I can now go and meet this stitching group once a month, which is really nice. So if you have never been on a retreat and have the opportunity to go on a retreat, please do. Because I met all kinds of people. I saw all kinds of stitching. Everyone was super friendly. I did try and get around. I probably did miss people. So, But it, it was just lovely to meet people and to chat and to, yeah, lots of laughs, lots of laughs, lots of fun. And I was tired when I got home on Sunday afternoon. So yeah, this coming two weeks, got Easter, which in the UK, if you're not in the UK, in the UK you get two bank holidays, you get Good Friday and Easter Monday, it's a bank holiday, so it's a long weekend. So we've got that coming, I've got the birthday party of the child who had a birthday this week on Sunday. Uh, got the hockey club end of season dinner on Saturday. So yeah, we've got quite a bit going on. And I've got house guests over Easter and whatnot, and obviously the Easter holidays, and got a few days out planned in the Easter holidays. So yeah, lots and lots going on. So shall we talk about some stitching? Eight minutes in. What shall we start with? I'm trying to decide because I usually do it in the order I stitched it in since I last saw you. But I don't think I'm going to do that today. I think I might start with the disaster. I might start with the disaster and get it out of the way. Hmm. Right, here we go. So what is my disaster? So I took quite a few different things to the retreat because I didn't know what would be best to stitch on. Um, so I went through my whips and picked out things that I thought would A, be easy stitching and B, were in need of a bit of love. Anyway, I pulled out this one. Garden Vegetables by Kathy Barrick, which I absolutely love. And this was my birthday in you start 2020, 2021, a couple of years ago I think, either 2020 or 2021, I can't remember, can't remember which one, but it's been kicking around for a while, I absolutely love it. And I did get a good bit of work done on this at the Essex Needles Retreat, so I only had that first column with the numbers in 
and I came across and I, well, I didn't even have all these lines so I finished that and I started doing a bit more of the grid work. So I'm in the middle of the grid working out. Anyway. So I'm stitching it, and I look here on the Saturday, so I was stitching this on the Friday, and I stitched it a bit on Saturday morning. And I looked at it and I thought, oh God, I'm mighty close to the edge of that fabric. Look at that. Oh, I'm not right on the edge yet. There's not a lot of fabric there. And I've got this, like, samplery bit to do down the side. Oh, I don't think that's going to work. Anyway, it's been playing on my mind and I thought well, I must get a tape measure out and measure it. I've just sat down to film. I have. I've got a tape measure out here and measure and it's, it's not enough. The fabric's not wide enough. So this is a 36 count by Seraphim and it's a fat quarter. And it's 17 inches by 26 inches. And the pattern is 16 and five eighths inches by 13 and seven eighths. So I've orientated it the wrong way. It would still be tight the other way because it's basically 14 inches high and that's 17 inches, but I would have an inch and a half margin top and bottom. But the pattern's 16 and a half inches basically and the fabric's 17. It's not enough. It's not enough. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. So yeah, so it's not big enough. Um, so I have to start it again. It's fine. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's not like, you know, I've done loads. At least I've realised, at least I've realised on Sunday that I was getting mighty, Saturday I was getting mighty close. So I'm going to have to pull all that out because I'm not wasting that whole piece of fabric. I am going to rip that out and it will be fairly easy to rip it out. But I'm going to have to rip it out and start it all again. So there you go. That is my disaster. And I bought all the needlepoint silks for it. So I'm blooming well going to do it and stitch it. But honestly, what a rude word. Rude word. Beep, 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 beep. Um, yeah. Yeah, it says. Yeah. So, there you go. So, now I don't know if I'm going to rip it out and then reorientate it the other way on the fabric and just have an inch and a half top and bottom. Or having been burnt, whether I might find something else to stitch on. So I'm feeling a bit, <laughs> bit downhearted about that. Particularly, have you actually got it out and done? A fair few hours stitching on that, to be honest, over the uh, retreat we had. But do not fear, it will still be a whip. I've just got to, I've just got to reassess it. I've just got to work out what I'm going to do instead. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not actually going to cry. No, I'm not, I'm not, don't worry. I'm just annoyed. Just annoyed with myself for not checking properly. Irritating, irritating. Anyway, so that disaster is kept in this House of Stitch and Stash project bag. So there you go. So that is my whip, UFO whip. I, I am going to start it again and probably fairly soon because I think if I don't then it's just going to start hanging over me. <laughs> so yeah, I, I will investigate fabric options in the next few days and decide whether it's staying on that or if I'm going to do something else. I think I'm going to keep it on 36 count. I'm liking the 36 count on it. I just, yeah, annoying. Okay, let me show you what I was working on last time, which I had a chat. Oh, I'm throwing stuff on the floor again. This is because I don't have a proper table next to me. I have the stool from the dressing table, and I just pile all the stuff on the stool, but it's not really 
some weeks it's fine and some weeks I organise it better and then other weeks like this week I just plonk it all down there and it just falls off. Right, the next one, this is going better, this is going better. This is, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you Rose Hips and Ivy, which is this drum and I'm afraid that's the only picture of it in this book so I can't show you the back. This is Rose Hips and Ivy from Blackbird Designs Sewing Club and I was working on this last time we saw each other and I was going great guns I think I was on the border I'd nearly finished the border and yeah, I had some really good stitching time on this and here's where I am now oh, I think I've made great progress let me move that needle um, so I've nearly finished this big basket of berries in the middle and the bird. Um, this trellising needs a few more leaves and bits and bobs. But yeah, and then I've only got that third motif to do and then that is the body of the drum finish. It does have a stitched top as well. But I'm really pleased that when I was at the retreat, Craftily Creative Claire, I think that's, I think that's an info channel, um, Craftily Creative Claire said she was going to start this and she just literally sat right behind me and then I did chat to her a few times and thought she was stitching a few times completely missed when she started this it's because she was behind me um, but anyway this one's mine I'm looking forward to seeing hers progress I'm stitching this on 36 count fox and rabbit hog bristle and I'm stitching it in all the called for week's dye works, which are here. And the fabric, as you can see, is big enough. It is plenty big enough. In fact, I can probably get another drum or something, or something long and thin out of the bottom. Because I'm going to... Well, I've only used about a quarter of the fabric, obviously. I've got to stitch the top of the drum as well. So I think probably I'll be able to get the top and a small here. And then something from the bottom as well. So... In no danger of running out of fabric on that one. I have put it away um, for a few days, but I'm kind of hoping that one might be finished before the end of April. Um, obviously the stitching, not the drum. Don't get excited. Don't get excited, people. Uh, I will make it into a drum one day. Yeah. Stick around. We, you know, approaching 20 years on finishing a bookmark, so you never know. Never know. So I've been doing that. And then, um, so I was doing that until I went to the retreat. And I think I even stitched on it a couple of days after the retreat as well. So I was doing that. And then um, I've been doing out and about stitching. Sorry, but that's what I threw on the floor. So I'm just picking it up off the floor. Oh, my God. Oh, this is all going to stuff today, isn't it? Right, anyway. So for my out and about stitching, I have continued with Seize the Day by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. That's the front cover. And this is where I've got to. I'm in the sea. I'm in the sea. Finally, I'm in the sea. This is the top of a jellyfish's head there, that pink blob. So yes, going great guns. I think you remember, you might remember last time I filmed, I said I wasn't sure about the aeroplane in the sky and I didn't think it added a lot. So I went and asked the small person, which was obviously the wrong thing to do because yeah, they want the aeroplane. So I'm going to have to stitch the aeroplane. Never mind. Right, I told you it was all going to stuff today. I was literally just gabbing away there and the memory card told me it was full and I was a little bit worried because sometimes when my camera does stuff like that it loses what you're actually recording but it does still seem to be there for better or for worse what you've already watched was already there sorry um what was I saying I was on about that aeroplane yeah small child said she wanted that aeroplane stitched so now I've got to stitch it but I'm down in the sea I am getting there. I feel like I'm winning. 
I feel like the end is finally in sight now that I'm in the sea. This is a 632 count Belfast linen in the colour sand something or a crafty kitten who don't trade anymore sand gold rush gold rush by crafty kitten who don't trade anymore so there we go what's that all the dmc so yeah i'm going to stick with that for a bit longer for my out and about until i just literally can't bear the sight of it anymore hopefully i will have finished it before i can't bear the sight of it otherwise i'll have to go away for a bit so that's what i've been doing out and about then the other thing i stitched at, at the retreat other than my disaster that yeah i think the shock factor's gone now and i'm <laughs> now i'm just upset about it anyway the other thing i stitched at retreat was uh this which is jane marshall 1857 by hands across the sea i'm pretty sure you can still get this on their website um but i bought it when it was a fundraiser for the australian bushfires but i'm pretty sure it's still available on their website and i had really i did some really good stitching on this at the retreat actually um i got some really nice compliments on it as well so thank you if you said you liked this at the retreat i appreciated that here's where i am so yeah, so what did I do at the retreat? I'd done all the lettering up there. I did, I finished off this pink um, kind of chain pattern. And then I did this line here, which is the green and, oh, it doesn't focus, green and pink checks. Can I make that focus? And then I came down and started doing this branch, which is going to be these flowers here. And I brought the blue lines down the side. So I didn't think that was too bad, actually. I'm stitching it on. It's a third. I think this is a 36 count. So actually, I've shown you a lot of 36 count today, haven't I? I do like 36 count. I think that might be where... Where my heart is at the moment. 36 count. Yep. 36 count clotted cream by Fox Glove and Lace. And I'm not stitching it in the called for colours. I was charted in a couple of silks and a dmc conversion but i just pulled from stash um it's not massively dissimilar to how it was charted but mine are mainly color and cotton or classic color works and that is that's the color palette can't see the yellow there where's the yellow there so yeah so again I made some really good progress and there's enough fabric woohoo woohoo for woohoo for enough fabric so hopefully that might be a finish at some point this year as well. I think this is on my whip go board to finish it. I think it's one of the few things that I actually said had to be finished on my whip go board. So when it comes up, maybe. And then, sorry, I'm just trying to put all this away. This is also in a house of stitch and stash project though. And then since I have got home, well, I, as I say, I stitched on that Blackbird Designs drum for a few more days. And then I decided that I would move on because I was falling very behind the crowd and kind of in the 14 minute mile group, I think, uh, to my Yasmin Made with Love's uh, Marathon Sam. And I am stitching that one, which is the uniqueness of others. Um, I think I've only done two nights work on this. It's on my Millennium Frame. This is where I am. So I've mainly just been outlining those leaves. The, the other two leaves are already done. Um, so I'm going to keep this one out the rest of the month. And then my whip go board pulled up for next month. Ten days stitching on my newest whip. Which this is my newest whip. So that is great. So two more nights this month. Twelve days stitching. I think, oh, I'm a big underestimator of how much needs doing. But I'm not intending to do all the words at the bottom. Oh, maybe, maybe 12 days. Do you think this could be a finish by next time I see you? Maybe, maybe. 
That's a goal, isn't it? Maybe that's my goal. If I throw my bookmark, so I've been waiting 20 odd years, finish this and find some fabric for that F up by the next time I see you. Might be a plan. Might be a plan. Anyway, so that's why I'm on that. This is some fabric you can't get. It's um, it's from Crafty Kitten, who, as I've already said, don't trade anymore. And it's and it was one of their limited editions. It was a September 2018 limited edition from a company that they don't trade anymore. So you really can't get it. But it is lovely. It's um, it's kind of a bit of like a bluey, grey with some yellow blotches. I quite like it actually and I don't stitch on 28 count very often it feels massive it feels absolutely massive but I am enjoying it so I will keep that out I will keep that out and I am um, again I'm not stitching it in the cord for but very close to the cord for and I just pulled my own threads from stash this is the right jumble of all kinds of classic colour works colour and cotton there might be some gassed in here there's a cottage garden thread that I'm going to use for the border. So yeah, a whole mishmash of things in there. And that's in a Penelope's Pocket Project bag. So yeah, all kinds of stuff. So that's all the stitching I've done since I last saw you. Um, for better or for worse. Right, what else did I get at the retreat? So I sat down and said, I've just before lunch, I think people were genuinely starting to get a bit worried about whether I was coming or not. Um, and I so said, been saved a seat, which was nice. And I sat down next to Alison, the stitching whip it. And she almost immediately gave me this. And she's like, I know you like green. Here's some sock yarn, which was just super kind of her really kind um yeah so i will alison cast on some socks with your lovely green wool um thank you very very much so that was from alison and then we played a game on the saturday night so we've all been asked to take a wrapped present to a certain value of money so i took I took one, someone else can talk about it. The person who won that can talk about that if they would like to. But, um, and there was a game where we had to kind of pass it backwards and forwards around the table and you ended up with not your parcel. That was the idea anyway. At that point I hadn't had so much wine that I ended up with my own parcel. And I got this one from Marie, which was really lovely. Marie is... She's, she wasn't really properly on Instagram and after a few wines on Saturday night we did kind of semi bully her onto Instagram. I'll put her thing down here so you can go and have a look. Um, anyway, so she gave me this lovely Bothy Threads kit. Bothy Threads kit. I love those umbrellas. And the boots, actually. She gave me that, which is lovely. And then also, she get, I've never seen one of these before. It's a Dimension Stitched Journal. So you get the journal and it's got like, um, holes in the board and you get the threads and you can decorate it however you like. It's a little bit like my Penelope's pocket um, thread and needle book isn't it? So yeah I look forward to having a go at being creative on there. Thank you Marie. And then oh I won a prize in the raffle so I did get a, a raffle ticket drawn and I could go and have a look at the table so I picked up this one Fancy Blackett. It's a pine brulee, fancy blackets brooms, which is cool. Quite like these ones. I've never done one before, but I do like them. They're very prim. So I got that. And then from the freebie table, I picked up a few bits. I got um, this one, which is from the drawn thread. I've really liked this one for quite a long time actually, so given it was there, I jumped on that and I've actually just noticed it's got a few threads in the back of it. So yeah, like that. And then I got three charts that kind of go together and they're all from Lenate. 
and they're right up my street. So there's uh, pears, plums, and I think it says malus on it. Oh, it's an apple, isn't it? And that is an apple. I don't know what language that's in. Uh, anyway, if you know what language apple is, uh, it might be Dutch actually. I think this might be Dutch. There you go. Um, so I might change the name on that, but I really love those. They're right up my street in terms of the kind of botanical still life things. So yeah, that's what I got from the retreat. I've got a little bit of haul. Oh, this one off a stash on load site. This is um, Secret Garden in Cross Stitch by Thea Governor. And actually, I bought this before I went to the retreat. But you'll see how up my street those Anate charts are because... Let me show you these. That I really like in the back of these book, in the back of the book. So it's got like an orchard section as well as um, gardening stuff. Sorry, it's not very exciting watching people flick through books, is it? It's called Orchard Harvest, the last chapter. And it's got some plums. It's got uh, some blueberries. So I'm getting a bit of a glare from the window. Uh, and it's got some apples. Oh, so I told you, you see. It was meant to be with those Lenate charts. And it's got some other really, just really, really lovely. If you like um, flower stitching, I would recommend this book. It's got some poppies, I like those. Uh, what else did I like in here? I like, it's got some honeysuckle somewhere, it was amazing. Yeah, look at that, look at that honeysuckle. I'm not sure I'd make it into a cushion, but partly because they're animals and it'd be fi and children, they're animals, and it'd um, be filthy in two seconds flat. There's roses. So yeah, I picked this up for not huge amounts of money on the secondary market. So if you're into flower stitching, I would recommend that. Right, I've got one more bit of haul, and then I've got a bit of knitting, and then I'm going to go. I haven't been at this 45 minutes. So I'm rubbing my shoulders again. I did some more of that training yesterday. It's not quite as painful this time, but it's still painful. Right, so I did in the end relent and pick up a few things from market. I got these from the Patriot Rabbit. So the first thing I got, more out of curiosity than anything else really, was the Nashville um, Market Cookbook. Now, I did not in any way buy this for the the recipes. Um, although I do cook, so I, I haven't even looked at the recipes. There might be some nice stuff in it, but I haven't. And obviously, um, they're mainly written by Americans, so everything's in cups, which I can do, and I do have a set of American measuring cups, but it feels like a very inefficient way to... Ugh! So I'm in my spare room and the cats just, you might have heard them, just scampered across there with a mouse that appears to be alive. Uh, let's just hold on. It is alive. I'm not actually scared of mice, but um, I don't really like picking their guts up. Lisa. It's currently alive and it's hidden underneath the pipe. I live in quite an old house and so the pipes aren't all in the wall. It's kind of behind this pipe. I'll go and I'll finish off and then I'll go and try and get a pot or something and hook it out and put it outside. Um, oh, that was a nice interlude. Anyway, what I was saying, yeah, I find cooking with cups a bit of a faff. Anyway, the main reason I bought this is because apparently it's got lots of smalls charts in it and it does, it actually has quite a lot, like more than I thought it would have. Now, obviously most of them don't have a picture that's just the chart so I can't really show it to you but there's a blackbird in here and it's not a tinsy tiny blackbird and that one does have a cover chart so bear with me a minute 
um, let me find something to just cover the, here you go, one of these Lenorte charts. If I cover the actual pattern, you see it there? That's in this cookbook and that's a blackbird. That's not that small a stitch really, it's 85 by 64. So that's a good little chart you've got there. As I said, I bet there are a lot of charts, but most of them don't have a a colour, like a, a finished picture that I can show you. It's just the chart. I'll see if I can see any more. Um, but there are, I'd say there's about five things there. There's a shepherd's bush one that's cute. And again, has a, a, a finish, so I can show it to you. I can hear it scrabbling around that mouth. Is that going to focus? Can you kind of see it there? It's like a house with a flower. But again, it's not the smallest chart in the world. It's kind of 30 by 53. So again, you know, decent sized chart. Um, there's a nice fox and rabbit chart and there's a little squirrel from Janine McGowan from the Blue Flower. So as I say, I think there's about five or six things I'd stitch in that that are quite good charts and the whole book was £9.50 which is like the price of a chart. One of the charts I'm about to show you I paid £9.50 for. So you know you've got a decent sized Blackbird Designs chart in there for £9.50 so I'd probably get that again even though I'm not that bothered about the actual recipes. The, the charts are good. Um, and then final two things were, this was my favourite of all the charts I saw at market. Oh, I can hear the cat, I can hear it rustling. Um, this is Spring Chicken's Pinky by Stacey Nash, and I really like that. That was my favourite of everything. I think it's quite huge. I don't think it's a small pinky, but anyway, I really like the hens on that. And then I got the Tortoise Tower from Plum Street, because I have quite a lot of the animal stacks. Not all of them, there are a few I don't like, but quite a lot of them. So I got those. So that is all the stitching. So if you're going to leave now, if you're not interested in my little bit of knitting, I will say goodbye. Thank you for stopping by. Sorry it's been a bit today. I do feel it's been a little... Um, yeah. And I will try and rescue the poor mouse in a second. So if you're leaving me now, I will see you later. Thank you very much for stopping by. If you're stopping with me, I do have a very small piece of knitting to show you. This is in my Penelope's pocket knitting pouch. Uh, and I've been continuing with my second sock. So I am now getting there. I have now finished the leg. This is in a bit of a tangle. Ooh, what's going on here? Oh, heck. oh no, it's all right. It's just tangled around the needles. I finished the leg. Woo! -hoo! That is my leg finished and last night I started my second heel flap. So I've got my uh, got my uh, stitch markers in for my heel flap. So I've only just started that so you can't really see it yet but um, I'm on about the fourth row of my heel flap. So it won't be too long now until I have a pair of socks and I can perhaps knit some more socks with some of the lovely yarn that people keep sending me to knit socks with. Anyway, that is it now, and I'm getting more and more alarmed about this poor mouse. My cat's stalking it. There's one like trying to get it out of the hiding place and the other one's just sat watching. So I am gonna go to the aid of uh, the, little, the little rodent. Anyway, that's enough of the mice. Until I see you next time, if you dare come back after today. Um, enjoy stitching, enjoy Easter uh, if you celebrate or if you just enjoy the bank holiday or all the things. I'll see you later stitches, bye.